Hi guys, I ask people what topics we should address and where there is confusion and this is what was next on the list. Who is Dr. Moore? So I will look at who Dr. Moore was in his professional life, then what he did for Muslims and what it was that eventually made him a household name with Muslims. And then I'm going to list some facts that provide a rational counterpoint based on reality and compare that to Muslim claims. So Keith L. Moore is now 90 years old, a professor emeritus, in other words, retired. He was the chair of anatomy and associate dean for basic medical sciences of the Faculty of Medicine in the Division of Anatomy at the University of Toronto, Ontario in Canada. And this was until 1984, something like 30 years ago. What is strange is he also worked at the King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. But this does not appear in his CV. It's not mentioned in any documents that he makes public. And he is most known for his textbooks on the subject of anatomy and human embryology. Now, even though I contacted him several times, he never talks about the time which is also missing in his CV, Islam. All you get from him today is that he's not been involved with the Quran for decades, so because he's more dead than alive, he will probably take the truth to his grave. A Christian grave, since he never converted to Islam. And maybe his conscience will still make him come clean before his death. You never know, you know. So, what is his connection with Muslims? What makes him a, like a household name with Muslims? Now, Dr. Moore, and I need to go into the history, but he was part of the academics who were invited by Al-Zindani, a Muslim fraudster from Yemen, who was the mentor to, and subsequently got a lot of money from Osama bin Laden. This Dr. Moore stayed behind when the others left. And he was blinded by something these Muslims could have, well, they provided him with, where we have no detailed knowledge what exactly that was. Other people like Hay and Kroner, Palmer, Armstrong, all professors in their fields of expertise have come clean and described how they were lured into attending scientific conferences organized and sponsored by Al-Zindani. Moore has not. He dutifully read off some scripts handed to him. He redefined the word in ancient Arabic, alaka, even though he doesn't speak a single word or any form of Arabic, let alone ancient Arabic or Quranic Arabic. And he then translated and changed this word into leech-like, which is patently absurd. The group around Al-Zindani then took a, a drawing of an embryo which was already used by the origin of all these miracles, another corrupt doctor, Dr. Maurice Bouquet, and cut away anything they didn't like, and then put a schematic drawing of a leech underneath it, showing the apparent similarity. And this drawing, this one drawing, has been copied and copied for the last one of 30 or even 40 years. So, what was all this deception and trickery in aid of? Well, Zendani needed some non-Muslim academics who would be tricked into delivering sound bites, which would be compiled into a full-length movie where they would be misrepresented and taken completely out of context and presented as Western scientists who confirmed the scientific accuracy of the Quran. Bouquet and Moore received special attention. And Moore in particular was shoved in front of the camera as much as possible and dutifully delivered these, these mini lectures where he was talking about the Quran. Now this dishonest charlatan then granted Zendani the copyright of one edition of his most popular book under the condition it would only be available in the Muslim world. And this was the developing human. And, and the edition that the Muslims got was the red or the third edition. Moore's fourth and all subsequent editions of The Developing Human went back to normal, where he, under historical gleanings, refers to the Quran as just, you know, medieval myth along with Aristotle, Galen and the Talmud. But the third edition, which is not available on the free market and, and not in the, in the Library of Congress, for example, was modified by Zindani, not Moore, by the way. 
where all scientific contents regarding embryology, in other words, the beginning phases, was replaced with Islamic texts from the Quran and, and from the Sunnah, of course, making it look as though Moore had condoned it. Well, indirectly he did, um, but he is not the one who actually made the changes. Now, all this made it look as though embryology in particular was described quite accurately in the Quran, which could not have happened a thousand years ago without modern tools. And this was picked up by every apologist and propagated the name Dr. Moore into every Muslim household. And last but not least, via Peace TV and Zakir Naik, as well as Adnan Oktar, or known as Harun Yahya. Now, all, all these efforts by Sintani paid off, and both Bouquet and Moore advanced to be the best scientists ever, both the recipients of dozens of Nobel Prizes for their exceptional work and recognized as the most highest leading scientists this planet had ever witnessed. And this lie was repeated over and over, and gullible Muslims simply swallowed it without thinking or checking finally having something they could be proud of as Muslims, because it made it look as though the Quran was correct and accurately described embryology, which was not possible, which meant a god must have been responsible for the description. But then apologists like Hamza Tzorzis from AIRA, the, the Islamic Education and Research Academy, which neither educates nor researches and is not an academy, he jumped on this bandwagon, and then the really intense research and really deep scrutiny of these Muslim claims by Captain Disguise and Martin Tavril finally put a definitive and very sudden end to this claim. They showed, using meticulous analysis, how the Quran merely repeats what was known at the time, and does it quite badly at that. And they showed what people like Hamza Tzorzis were claiming. It was nonsense. The entire bubble burst, and it burst quickly. And reality showed how all these Muslim apologists were simply lying, and they were making stuff up to make their God and the Quran look better. They tried to make it look as though the Quran correctly represents reality, which of course is not the case. Bouquet, and especially Moore, were eventually exposed as the dishonest, corrupt, unscrupulous charlatans they are. And that's the end of the story. The Quran does not accurately represent <laughs> embryology or anything scientific. And that is all there is to it. So this is the explanation why Dr. Moore is known to every Muslim because they want to. So now that the bubble has burst, do you think that Muslims have learned anything from this? And do you think that apologists have become, well, let's call it more honest, and that they are now saying, well, we can't do this anymore? No. They quickly turned to the next area of fabrication, the golden age of Islam, and now they're trying to collect some false recognition and pride from those false claims. So I am sure we shall meet again. But thanks for your time for now.